Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at VMware Transformation Control Policy Engine, particularly around identity and access management. Now, before we get into the particular feature in Transformation Control, let's take a look at how Kubernetes handles role-based access control. Now, I'm currently logged on to a Kubernetes cluster uh, using Octant. This is a web browser that lets me look at uh, Kubernetes resources through a visualizer. And if you look at Kubernetes, it has an inbuilt definition around role-based access control and, or with roles and role bindings. So for example, it has various role bindings around cluster edit, cluster view, and all kinds of role bindings. And we can create new role bindings as we go. Now, an organization may have multiple clusters at the same time, and uh, different development teams will need uh, access to these clusters. Now, these role bindings actually define what users can have access and at what level. So if I'm an operation person and I need to onboard a set of developers or a new developer for them to have access to these clusters, I'll have to kind of go in, into each and every Kubernetes cluster that I have attach a role-based access control for that particular user using the identity management source that I have. Now, this is where transmission control comes in and simplifies things. So instead of having to log into each and every cluster to define role-based access control, I can simply log on to transmission control and do this in a single shot. So let's take a look at how this is done. Now, currently, I'm logged on to transmission control. Transformation Control has its identity information pulled in through cloud.vmware.com. So I can import my users, my user groups through VMware's cloud services identity management. Once I've done that, I can create a cluster group, which is a logical grouping of multiple clusters. So for example, in my development cluster group, I have some the clusters that uh, are coming in from AWS, from Azure, some from vSphere, etc. Now, this new developer that I need to onboard needs access to all these clusters because they're going to work on that particular pipeline. So what I do is I get into my policies um, and I select that cluster group, which is development in my case, and I can directly define a role binding here so let's say the new user needs to have access at the um, cluster level. So I'm going to give them um, read and write access to the cluster itself. And I'm going to add that user's name over here. And I'm going to add that user What's going to happen is in the back end, transmission control is going to talk to each and every cluster that is part of this uh, group, and it's going to trickle down that information into individual Kubernetes clusters. Now, if I go back to one of the clusters that I'm logged on to, and if I just recycle this, so in my cluster role edit policy, I should see that user being added here as well. You have Tanzu Dev one that I just added as a user, um, also having um, automatically created into this Kubernetes cluster. Now I created this access control for the overall cluster, but let's say there are dev teams that are using very specific namespaces within these clusters. We can even in include identity and access management policy for those through workspaces which is a collection of namespaces per cluster. So for example, in my Acme Dev staging uh, workspace, I have multiple namespaces that belong to different clusters. I can similarly create a new identity role uh, policy over here and give that dev user access to just these specific namespaces within this workspace. And that way, transformation control will then automatically update those individual namespaces and are back corresponding to those namespaces with correct access to that particular user. So that's a quick overview on transmission controls, identity and access management. Thank you for watching this video.